Another day, another terrible Trump speech. Trump spoke in Savannah, Georgia. And I've talked about before, just quickly before getting into these clips, a phenomenon very much present in the Trump campaign, which is since Harris got into the race, Trump's really struggled to run against her. And now that's showing in her momentum. And so with all the crazy things Trump has done and said because of his discombobulation running against her, his aides have tried to set up as much as possible environments for him to publicly appear that'll be really boxed in where he is specifically talking about manufacturing and the tax code, for example, or Trump details his economic plans, or he had one event where he had boxes of food sitting all around him as if to scream at him, stay on the topic of high prices, but he can never do it. Or when he does talk about policy, he, it's so unconvincing and and sort of painful to watch. And that's what I have for you here in Savannah, Georgia. When he's on script, it's not compelling and he doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. When he's off script, well, we know what that looks like. And his aides cannot save him with these sorts of events they're scheduling. And this one was, was branded as a Trump speech on the tax code. And I think the other word was manufacturing. All right, talk about that. Don't get on anything else. But like he's doing at every event now, he has to rant about his debate failure. Or as he puts it, the greatest debate ever. Watched other countries steal our jobs. Now we are going to be going after their jobs and bringing them back to America where they belong and where, frankly, they want to be. They want to be. If Kamala Harris gets four more years, she will de-industrialize the United States and destroy our country. We will become virtually a banana republic. We will be destroyed. Their plans are horrible. And if they wanted their plans, again, I say it all the time, I said it during the debate, where, by the way, we absolutely destroyed her, except, <laughs> except for the fakers. On a microphone. Oh, she did very well, Tenard. She did very well. She did very well. She couldn't put two sentences together. Take a look at her answers. And it was three on one, too. ABC ought to be ashamed. It was three on one. <laughs> you see? He has a talking point he's supposed to be delivering, which is if Kamala Harris were to be able to do the things that she's promising, why hasn't she done them yet? But he gets distracted and starts ranting about how he won the debate when obviously any serious person, any objective observer would say it was a terrible night for Trump. Even if you like Trump, if you're honest with yourself, it was bad for him. And Harris couldn't put two sentences together? You need to think of a new talking point, okay? Because that does not apply to Vice President Kamala Harris, especially at that debate where she used her ability to put multiple sentences together to absolutely run circles around you. But again, on the talking point of if she had all these big promises or if she has them in this campaign, why hasn't she done them yet? Her and Biden have done a bunch of the things. And then she wants to build on them. So she's not going to make promises about things she already did. She's making new promises like Trump's making new promises built on a foundation of credibility based on the things she's done already. And yes, Trump and MAGA media's misinformation machine misleads people into believing a lot of these things didn't happen, into believing our economy spiraling when, as Axios put it, we're dominating the world economic competition right now, the likes of which we haven't seen in years. But, but Trump has created myths, and we'll get to in a different speech today of Trump's him saying you're a stupid person if you believe crime is going down, even though that's exactly what is happening. If you believe in reality now, according to Trump, you're a stupid person who needs your head examined. We'll be right back to the video. Just really quickly, if you're not already, I would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. We are really close to 1 million subscribers. You can help us get there. Easy, free way. And then we do have merch at LukeBeasleyMerch.com with Harris as a promo code. You can get free shipping. Super cool election-themed merch. Check it out. Back to the video. Then you have this. Fakers. 
on a microphone. Oh, she did very well tonight. She did very well. She did very well. She couldn't put two sentences together. This is the tail end of the last one going into more stuff. Take a look at her answers. And it was three on one, too. ABC ought to be ashamed. It was three on one. And actually, it's also interesting because after that horrible situation, because it's the fake news all over again, fake news, you got a lot of them back here, by the way, but it's the fake news. But you know what? My numbers, look at the numbers today. The numbers are higher than they've ever been. We've never had numbers this good. So, so something happened that was pretty good. But it was, uh, it was interesting. I, I, I couldn't believe. I thought she was so bad. I came off that stage. I said, she was so bad. You know, one of the things, he's, he's the goat of debates. I said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? They said, greatest of all time, 21 debates. And I thought that was one of my best debates. But, you know, after they spin, they spin better than anybody. Well, I don't know if I thought you did too well tonight. <laughs> and wasn't she really terrific? She didn't say anything. Except lies like a bloodbath, like Charlottetown. That ending in him referring to Charlottesville as Charlottetown, not the only glitch of the night or of the afternoon. I'll get to that uh, in a second here. But it's sad. That, that is sort of cringy to watch because you all know it's not that Harris has the most ideal poll numbers. I'd prefer her to be leading significantly in every swing state. But she has been the one making gains. She has been the one benefiting from a post-debate bump. But he invents these stories, a different clip that I may play for you from this. He keeps repeating, we're, go we're, we're up in the polls, we're up in the polls, we're up in the polls. Maybe he's talking about Georgia exclusively because he's there, but at every speech, he acts like nationally things are looking hot for him and best they've ever been. That's just not even close to true. It's a fantasy world. And again, cut to this, Jane, this split screen. Trump speaks on manufacturing in Georgia, and then he's up there ranting about it. <laughs> I swear. It was my best debate performance. Okay. And, and he, he is even acknowledging that that wasn't the takeaway from pundits with his little, oh, they said it was a bad night for me. No, it wasn't. Oh, goodness. Here, he does a thing that I'm never going to get over how bizarre this is to me. He makes mistakes like everybody does. Just a second ago, as I was saying he had a glitch, I had one. I said... This speech tonight or something when I meant the afternoon. And I went, or I mean the afternoon. Corrected it, moved forward, acknowledged it was a mistake. Trump does this thing where he tries to sort of juke you into thinking he didn't make a mistake by just saying the word he meant over and over and over again and then saying the other word and, and trying to make it make sense. I'll show you a second example of this right after. But here he is at the same speech. Eating our lunch and now we're eating their lunch. And we did so much. We gave you before the greatest the biggest tax hikes in the history of our country and so he says the greatest tax hike up uh, he's meaning to say tax cut then you'll see he goes regulation we also gave you the greatest regulation cut oh I, I meant and then he has to go all the way back around and prove that he didn't make a mistake the creation of Space Force was the greatest. You know, we were being beaten badly in space, and now we're the leader in space. China and Russia were eating our lunch, and now we're eating their lunch. And we did so much. We gave you before the greatest, the biggest tax hikes in the history of our country and the greatest regulatory uh, cuts in the history. Think of it. We gave you, uh, we took their tremendous tax hikes. We gave you the greatest tax cuts in the history of our country, bigger than Ronald Reagan's tax cuts, bigger than anybody's. And the hikes, they want to do it now. They want to hike your taxes at levels that we've never had before. 80%, 70% was a number that she thought sounded good. But we gave you the biggest tax cuts in history, and now we gave you the biggest regulation cuts. And that's how we had that tremendous growth. That's how we had the greatest job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they 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 gave wait they gave you hike 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 they gave hike we gave cut hike cut hike cut yeah we know okay just stop stop we know what you're trying to say <laughs> admit you made a mistake and move on it's so awkward it reminds me of this one we have bagram in alaska they say it might be as big might be bigger than all of saudi arabia I got it approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it done. In their first week, they terminated it. Uh, check that one out. Bagram. Check that one out. On, it, it's, it's th no, think about this. Between Bagram, between you go uh, to uh, Anwar, you, you take a look at the kind of things that we've given up. Uh, we should be, we should have that air base, we should have that oil, we should have, we would have had a whole different country. But to give up Anwar, to give up uh, the, the biggest air base, military air base in the world, and they left it in the dark of night with the light. So instead of going in Anwar, uh, I, ah, 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 that's what I meant, in Alaska, and, and Bagram, Afghanistan, and, both of those, we gave up Bagram. Instead of to do that, you could just go, have I been saying Bagram? Uh, sorry, I meant Anwar. But he can never do that. So he just has to repeat the two words over and over and over until he figures it out, hoping that you'll get so discombobulated you won't realize that he was saying Bagram is in Alaska. Whew. Moving forward in this thick, thick policy speech. Very policy dense as you can tell he said this your only worry will be deciding which job to take there will be plenty of them that will be your biggest problem <laughs> darling which company should i go with we're going to bring them back and we're going to bring them back at levels not to be believed but you'll believe it in about uh, two years from now you're going to say wow that happened fast you're going to have so many companies wanting to come in because yeah we're already essentially living in that environment yeah, I know. Oh no, you're you're gonna invalidate people's. We are. It's not that people have the jobs they want. That's why we want to produce more good-paying jobs, give people more strength in their workplace to negotiate for better terms, all that. But when talking about creating a tight labor market, that's what we've been in for the last couple of years. We've had super low unemployment. We've had super strong job growth. So if you want the things Trump's talking about, just vote for the people who are currently in power. Then again, he tries to talk policy here. So now he, he's not on the subject of, I beat Kamala Harris in the debate. Oh, I promise. But all he can think up with, <laughs> with explaining his tariff proposals that are widely uh, concerning and criticized for good reason he just talks about how beautiful of a word tariff is. You pay a tariff, a very substantial tariff, when you send your product into the United States. And by the way, you know, for years they knocked the word, the word tariff, properly used, is a beautiful word. One of the most beautiful words I've ever heard. It's music to my ears. A lot of bad people didn't like that word, but now they're finding out I was right. And we will take in hundreds of billions of dollars into our treasury and use that money to benefit the American citizens. And it will not cause inflation, by the way. <laughs> it's interesting when hundreds of economists analyze Trump's tariff proposals and say, this would be really inflationary because you're talking about i lose track of what it is that he's saying because he loses track of it but he said 10 percent, 15 maybe we'll do 20 percent tariffs across the board and how that would impact prices for consumers especially in the short term and trump's reaction is not to go well i have consulted with different economists and we've looked at how and then you could think up some, it would be difficult because it doesn't align with the facts, but you could think of some political answer that makes it sound like you're taking into account the impact of inflation, but we're going to reduce that. We're going to balance it out by these other things that I'm talking about, these other initiatives. But he doesn't. He just goes, oh, it doesn't cause inflation. That's my answer. No, no, it doesn't. Trust me. Which, by the way, as he lists off more and more and more tax cut proposals he's now up to saying just i saw a friend of the show Aaron rupar say 
as we enter into the speech, is this where Trump's going to announce he's just going to abolish all taxes? Because every time he holds a speech, it seems he announces a new thing that we're not going to tax. And those probably won't actually happen. But let's say he did everything that he's planning to do. Those proposals added with his tariff proposals would be so inflationary, which is interesting given that he is the guy who's supposed to fix inflation, even though it's already been fixed and uh, doesn't really align with, with how he's branding himself. He did say this. And a very shy, quiet person doesn't like mixing it up too much. But she is really highly respected in Washington. And she's fantastic. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Highly respected. Is that how you, uh, how you think of MTG? He's been saying this one a lot. But pretend you're one point down, please, and go and vote. Okay, don't. Just go vote. You got to vote. We got to win this. If we don't win this election, our country is gone. I really believe it. That's what he said last time. And then it didn't happen. And all the things he broke were fixed. With still more things that need to be done. Here's more. Here I am. We're leading. Leading. In the polls. We're leading by a lot. We're leading by a lot. They said, oh, we don't have to worry about them. Uh, no, they have to worry about me. We're leading, we're leading, we're leading. I'm leading, I'm leading, I'm leading, I'm leading in all the polls. I'm leading in all the polls. I won against Kamala Harris. I was the best. That was the best debate performance I ever had. I'm leading in the polls. I'm going to win. It's going to be a landslide. People don't even need to go out and vote. I have all the votes that I need. I can only lose if they cheat. I can only lose if they cheat. I'm leading in all the polls. I won the debate. It does seem that he's just trying to... That was my imitation of, of Trump, by the way. That wasn't a psychotic episode. I think that's just him reassuring himself. He's panicking, so he just has to say positive thoughts. Wishful thinking, right? So he says the country's going to be gone. He's also predicting something he predicted last time, and the opposite has happened. Tax, you're going to have deterioration. You're going to have a depression. If that happens, you have a 1929 style depression. This woman is grossly incompetent. Grossly incompetent. Yeah, he said the exact same thing. We're going to have a 1929 style depression. And now he's making this prediction amid day after day <laughs> in recent days of record stock market performance. Not to mention the broader economic metrics that are looking pretty solid than this. Our country has really gone back to levels. The only employment was all the bounce back jobs that we created. Millions and millions bounce back right after the pandemic. So let's, let's get this all straight. Years into Biden's administration, when there were strong jobs reports, Trump would say, oh, that's because of me. People are expecting that I'll win, so they're hiring more. How you square that circle, I don't know. He says the stock market's going up because people predict that he's going to win. Even though the betting that's going on is sliding in Harris's direction. Not to mention the polls have just gotten better for Harris. So that's lining up with the stock market doing better. I don't think those two are connected, but it flies in the face of Trump's assertion. And he's saying the job growth, the recovery that was so strong under Biden was just because of a Trump rebound that he set into place. Wrong for so many reasons. To save us time, I'll just say, remember that job growth after we recovered all of the pre-pandemic jobs remained stronger under Biden than it was under Trump, even if you exclude COVID for both of them. So even if you take out the worst of Trump's administration, still, that stat remains. Out of all the jobs that were created, most of those jobs went to illegal migrants. You know that. It didn't go to Americans. And what's happening with the people pouring into our country is they are killing the jobs of the black population and the Hispanic population. They're taking their jobs. 
so didn't he just say that he takes credit for the job growth that happened under Biden? <laughs> so there was awesome job growth, but it was because Trump's policies like down the road made, mm, made it happen. All right, all right. But then also all the job growth, I guess now because of Trump's plan that he's taking credit for, <laughs> went to migrants. That contradicts strangely. But also, let's say he's saying, no, the good job growth was because of me. The bad job growth was because of migrants. Uh, not true. Also, hey, that's a little note. That's not an accurate stat because he's pulling that out of his rear end. That has come from nowhere of credibility. He just likes to say it because as this election hopefully is slipping away, he has to lean more and more. And we're going to talk about this with a a crazy <laughs> event that I have uh, a segment prepared about where his brain is just broken and he just has to repeat over and over. They're coming from jails. They're coming from insane asylums. They're coming from jails. They're coming from jails to try to scare people into voting for him, even if it doesn't make sense to. I'll leave it there. Let me know what you thought of Trump's policy speech about manufacturing and the economy and the tax code. Uh, it's not working, Trump advisor. Sorry. And you can get the members-only bonus show while supporting the show by clicking that join button below.